So without further ado, please let us warmly welcome Dr. Norman Chen, our speaker, first speaker today, to the podium. We can uh, see that he graduated from the National uh, Taiwan University a uh, long time ago, got his master's from the University of New Hampshire, and his PhD from Iowa State. Very briefly, uh, he has uh, spent most of his work working on uh, the properties of rock phosphates for direct application, and we may actually call him Mr. Rock Phosphate, if I am <laughs> yes. uh, The yes. floor is yours. Thank Dr. you. Chair. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, appreciate it. Thank you all. That's in Alabama, I say, you all. Yeah, you all, how are you all? <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that uh, I'm able to come back to Malaysia again. In first time I came to Malaysia, it was 1977. I attended the um, international conference. I presented a paper on phosphate rock. 27 years later, 2014, I came back, and I'm still talking about phosphate rock. So phosphate rock must be good. I'm making a living on phosphate rock for my whole life in the United States. And uh, so I've been in Malaysia, actually, this is my 10, 10, 10 times. But the last time I was here, it was 2001, that is the 13 years ago. Uh, I organized on behalf of IFDC the very first international meeting on phosphate rock for derivation. And how many of you attended that meeting? 2001. 2001, one, two? Not many, huh? So it must be you uh, new generations. That, uh, we had about 100, many researchers, because it's uh, academic research, 100 participants from 35 countries very well, very successful, that's uh, 13 years ago. The proceedings was published by IFDC in 2003. So if you are interested in that, you can uh, look at that uh, proceedings in the IFDC publication catalog, that you can find it. And so uh, after so many years, that the 13 years, is I'm sure KL particularly must have changed a lot. One thing I can tell is the brand new international airport and we almost got lost, I mean, so huge airport, and uh, that's uh, uh, so glad that, uh, to come back here. Uh, let's see. The title, you can see that uh, looking at the uh, economic use of phosphate rocks with a special reference to a highly reactive biova or satura phosphate rock from Peru for oil palm production. Now, the old name we always call satura, but now the trade name is biova. The Setura is the name of the desert in northern part of Peru. Bayova is the location of the mine. But basically, you see the uh, following presentation. Sometimes I refer to Bayova, sometimes Setura. Just keep remember, they are the same rock, not two different types of rock. It's the same, just different names, OK? So be sure that the Bayova and Setura, the same, you know, uh, uh, being used the same. So we will concentrate on the uh, Bayova rock. But in general, give you some uh, background of phosphate rock, OK? First of all, it's my dealing with my uh, work on phosphate rock. Initially, I put my marriage to phosphate rock. My wife was got mad. She said, you talk about phosphate as a marriage. So I said, let me change to my work on phosphate rock. Uh, began at, at Iowa State University for PhD. This is research on phosphate rock. And uh, during the four years, 1968 to 1972, that uh, I work on different sources of phosphate rock, about kinetics, dissolution, solubility, and so on, crystal structure, and so on. I never touched soil samples, no soil sample at all for four years, phosphate rock, phosphate rock, and got a PhD in soil chemistry. But I didn't touch soil, so <laughs> I learned the soils later on. Continue to work on phosphate rock, at uh, IFTC from uh, 75 to 206. That uh, almost joined IFTC was created uh, late in 74. So I, was, I joined IFTC from day one until 206 at the age of 65. So it's a mandatory retirement, and I retired from IFTC eight years ago, eight years ago. So you add it up as I'm 73 years old man. 73 years old man, eh? But uh, I'm still working on research at home, uh, still devoted uh, is my hobby, my blood on phosphate rock uh, after retirement in 2006. And probably the scientists working on phosphate rock the longest. That's my own speculation, over 46 years. 
if any one of you know someone is working as long as I've been working on or even longer than 46 years, please let me know. I'd like to meet this my dear comrade, if you know anyone, okay? We all know that uh, phosphorus is extremely important. This kind of extreme, but basically, it shows that uh, without phosphorus, you put a lot of nitrogen in, it's almost no response. But if you, once you put the phosphorus and then put the nitrogen, now you get a nitrogen response in terms of grain yields of upland rice. So that's the uh, uh, importance of phosphorus for plant response to other nutrients. Very important for phosphorus, particularly the early stage of plant growth. Now, phosphate fertilizers must come from the raw material called phosphate rocks. This shows the distribution of phosphate rock deposits worldwide basis. Uh, you see different countries, many of the uh, Africa. And, but phosphate rock, basically, we can classify into igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and Christmas island is called, uh, sometimes called uh, so island type of deposits. And you can see that uh, distribute, uh, unfortunately, not much of phosphorus in uh, Malaysia and Indonesia except some guano. Guano is a pet, you know, the seabird deposit uh, normally is uh, uh, very uh, small quantities. Uh, in Brazil, especially, not Brazil, Latin America, especially Biova. Let me show you the Biova rocks in here. Setura, Biova. In the northern part, northwest of Peru south of Ecuador. So the biova rock we are talking about in here, this is the desert in here. And then you have many other phosphate rocks, in, uh, particularly in Brazil. But unfortunately, most of the rocks in Brazil that are uh, igneous rock or low reactivity phosphate rocks. So Brazil is now, began, three years ago, began to import biova rock to Brazil. And I've been in Brazil two times, 2011, in 2013, just last October, I traveled around the Brazil almost for three weeks. Like this trip will be three weeks to travel west and east Malaysia. And I went to Chile, in the southern part of Chile. It's a grass uh, uh, pasture, many pasture, and just like New Zealand. So I've been in those places to uh, promote the use of highly reactive uh, bio rock. And uh, this time to come to Malaysia to introduce uh, uh, bio rock. Now, this is not my first time to promote the uh, highly reactive rock. In 1995, I began to promote the use of Gafsa phosphate rock from Tunisia. And I conducted many, many uh, seminars since 1995, 1996, 1997, and so on. To make phosphate fertilizers, the raw material we know is phosphate rock. Now, if you acidulate it with sulfuric acid, you make a single superphosphate. And then if you use the phosphoric acid, you make a triple superphosphate, all right? Now, you can also make phosphoric acid and then uh, precipitate, uh, filter out, remove the uh, gypsum, and then ammoniate the phosphoric acid, and then make a MAP or DAP, the monoammonium phosphate, that monoammonium phosphate. These two are more or less international uh, uh, market. And triple superphosphate as well, that uh, you can buy those uh, high analysis, p 5 normally over 42, 46%. The other one is that in South Africa, for example, in China, to a certain degree, you uh, acidulate with nitric acid, then you, you make nitrophosphate. phosphate. Now, the other process is without any processing, direct application. Now, if the rock can be used for direct application, wouldn't it be nice? Because you skip all this uh, expensive uh, process of acidulation. So technically, theoretically, direct application of phosphorus should be cheaper than those finished product through uh, uh, acidulation process. Whether the phosphate rock can be used or not, that's uh, a good question. You uh, need to understand the uh, important uh, factors affecting the use of phosphate rock. Basically, the most important uh, factors, one is the phosphate rock sources, called reactivity or solubility or whatever. Soil properties, pH of course is number one. Exchange for calcium if you lime. Now, in Malaysia, for oil palm, you probably do not lime the soil much, so this may not be a big issue. And then crop species. So you see, tea, water soluble P is much easier one. The soil scientists know that all water soluble P, and depends on soil pH. Even crop species is not so important, so it's simple. 
to uh, work on water soluble But to work on phosphate rock, you've got these three factors. Then you have interaction, one and two, two and three, one, two, three. It's very complicated. Why is it so complicated? Uh, let me ask you this, talking about the phosphate rock sources. Say if I ask you the question, is the TSP produced in Jordan the same as in the United States? The answer is yes, TSP is TSP. How about the El Hasa phosphate rock in Jordan, the same as North Carolina rock in the United States? The answer is no. A rock is not a rock. They are not the same. Why? Because the chemical and mineralogical properties of phosphate rock vary widely among different phosphate rock deposits, and so ergonomic effectiveness of uh, various phosphate sources also varies widely. They are not the same. So then you need to find out, and you want to know why they, are, they differ so widely from sources to sources, unlike TSP. Look at this simple example that uh, this is a grad experiment done in Colombia in oxy soils, acid soil. And this is the amount of fossil supply. This is the uh, dry matter year of grass. And you have so many different sources of fossil rock. You can see the TSP perform. And the North Carolina, Giafsa, Tunisia, Biova from Peru, almost as good as TSP, almost 90% above. Followed by Arara from Israel, and then some rocks in Colombia, and then some rocks in uh, Brazil. And most of the Brazil rocks are igneous rock. The last one, Lowest one is called Tapila, Tapila, and this is the check. So you can see that the increase in here. These are as good as TSP, and this one, Tapila, is as good as the check. A good salesman, you don't say your product is bad, always good. So this is as good as the check, okay? 